Now, one of the viewers made a very interesting observation. You remember in yesterday's video I said how I thought I had maybe dead skin or something on the uh, on the wire? And he said, could it possibly be a coating? And I think I replied back something to the effect of, well, I don't think there's any coating on it, but then I started thinking about it. And, uh, well, first of all, I'll sort of show you that it, how I know it's not a coating, because if there's a coating on it, if you touch it from the side, you're not going to be able to get through to the, to the copper. And, uh, now the contacts, contacts in this thing are not as good as they used to be, so, uh, <clears throat> Hopefully this is going to show that it's that it's making contact. Okay, we'll hold down here like that. Now when I touch this, it should something should happen on the on the display there. If I can get this, I know there's probably a better way to do this. Okay, I think I'm making contact there. Now when I touch this, it should change the, the, uh, come on. Okay, there you, you see a jump. Let's do this a little differently. Let's do it like this. I know you can hardly see it because it's, it's such a fine wire. Yeah, I'll hold it like that, and I'll go, and I'll touch it on here. Now, if there was a coating on there, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go through, unless the coating was badly worn. But I, I don't think so. Um, but what I think it might be is a lubricant and here's why if the if these strands have to uh, like a like like a dry lubricant uh if these if these strands are flexing you know when when they bend like like this the inside the inside uh wire is going to want to go out and the outside wire is going to pull back if you know what i mean so it could be there's a lubricant in there that that helps them to, you know, slide against each other really, really well, so that uh, well there'd be less chance of breaking the strand because once the strands start to break, of course, then the the wire is losing its effectiveness. Um, now. Okay, let me just sort of zoom in on it. Right now I'm, I'm backed off. I'm backed off here at about uh, 8 power. But if I zoom right in as far as I can here. Okay. I'd like to be able to show you this. Well, I am seeing little tiny well, not near as bad though as we saw in that other piece i'm I'm just seeing little pieces of dust, so that kind of leaves my lubricant idea out. Um, I thought it might be sort of like a dry a dry lubricant. But I'm not really seeing that. I think the the best thing for me to do would be to go back down to my workshop and cut a pristine piece off of this same cord, because this this one here has been you know kicking around on the brown cloth and everywhere else, and it's probably it's probably picked up a lot of dust. Anyway, uh, uh, thanks for the idea, Jim. <laughs> a couple of episodes back, when I was trying to feed the easy line through the little eye. Uh, our eye bolt, 
that we'd made up and I was using the super macro and we were nice and close, well I quickly got a glimpse of the easy line and how it's made up and we caught the very end of it here. And if you look closely you can see how the easy line is made up out of several strands of rubber instead of one solid one. At a distance it looks like it's just one piece but it's actually probably I'm guessing a dozen different strands all sort of fastened together somehow. Now I don't know how lint free this is but if I can control my compulsive poking disorder and not be moving them around. Here's that little one that was that we uh, were looking at there that uh, had all the debris on it. Now let's not go rolling it around on here. Have I got everything? Yep. Probably about five minutes has passed here. You know, it's the first time I've pulled out a glass slide and there's been something stuck on it. I don't know if that's a blemish in the glass or what that is. I have to check that out. Mind you, this was bargain basement slide, so... Okay. Now let's find a way that we can look at that nice and close and see all of them. I've got an idea. Okay, I think you get the idea. I'm just going to do that with the rest of them. And the last one. And this is the one we're going to want to take a close look at. And here's that little blemish in the slide. Wonder. Oh, it's like a little piece of fleck of paint or something. Yeah. Well, it's not there now. Now I was just thinking here. I might be smart to just make a little bit of a bend on the end here. You know Murphy's Law. Um, Alright, let's put on the super macro. Kind of get these all grouped together here. Because the super macro, if I remember, only takes in a width of about 7 millimeters. And I want to be able to see them all at the same time. Now, if you will remember, it was this little one on the end here. If I can get it out. On the right hand side. It was the one that was so loaded with debris. Let's see if we can get them all glumped together there so we can more or less see them all at the same time. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now let me check the screen. And the screen shows that they are pristine. Okay, so here's my thinking. When we get our hood, parts are going to be like this. Now let's let's assume that that uh, this particular part, and it, it called for a line going from say the corner up here, somewhere. Now when when it's mounted on the Onto the onto the ship, 
you can't get at the inside. But on almost all of these parts, wherever wherever a hook, or an eye, an eye hook, I should be calling it, has to be uh, installed, uh, you, can, you can get on the inside before you glue it down onto whatever. And I'm thinking that what I should do is when I get the manual for the hood, I should go all the way through and see uh, where it calls for lines, if it if it does in the hood manual. Remember, in the Bismarck manual, it did not show the lines. So maybe I should do a little bit of investigating to find out where lines went and possibly uh, put the hook on before I, I uh, mount this small part on what, whatever. And then uh, I would be able to glue it from the back. I'm going to just do an experiment. Let's just, let's just for the fun of it, drill a tiny little hole in the corner there, run one of these through, and see how it will glue from the back side. And that way you're not going to be seeing a glob of CA glue on, on this side. I, I think it might look better. Now, I have, I've never tried it, so I don't know. Let's, let's, for the fun of it, just give it a whirl here. We've got a few minutes left today. Okay, there's three things I wanted to remember to tell you right now. First of all, just in case somebody's thinking that I missed a part off of the Bismarck, nope, this is a piece left over from that uh, model that Tony sent us a year and a half ago. The practice model. Anyway, uh, I don't have too much left of that. When I did my big cleanup here a month ago, I, I threw a lot of it out, but I kept some of it. Anyway, let's let's pretend we wanted to put a little eye hook right there. Okay. I think we should be able to get at it from the inside to apply a little bit of glue. Now, the third thing, oh, the second thing I wanted to remember to tell you was that um, the idea of perusing through the manual and looking for where I should mount the line, the, uh, the the rigging on the hood, was also the idea of at least one of the viewers. So I don't want to be trying to take a bunch of credit here uh, when other people have made suggestions as well. Now, uh, in this case, I did also think about it about the same time. So, uh, yeah, I like to give credit where credit's due. Um, now, the third thing I forgot. No, the third thing was that little bug that I found in the, uh, that one of the viewers called the fly in the ointment. I thought that was pretty good, by the way. So our fly in the ointment, I was thinking, how come I did not see it? Remember I put that little uh, dollop of, of uh, soap in the bottom? Well, I should have seen that. I should have seen the fly, that is. It, it was big enough that it should have caught my eye, and I didn't see it. I'm thinking now that perhaps it ended up in my kettle because my kettle is also right beside the fly zapper. Yeah, what an th awful thought. Now, it seems to me that this should have been through a long time ago because I'm pressing pretty hard there. I think if I remember right, I concluded that one of these bits was not sharp, and I got a feeling this is it. Well, let's just keep going here. That's terrible. I should have been through a long time ago. I'm going to switch bits here. Okay, this bit here looks a little better. 
it's a 23,000. The other was around 18, so this one's a little bit heavier. A little heavier than what I want. But let's just continue on here. Now I don't want to be poking my thumb. all right to me just clean up all those little burrs okay I just w took one at random oh another thing I was going to mention is that I noticed that when I was making the loops some of them were a little bit larger than others another viewer had a good idea he said why don't you take your larger wire and use that as a something to you know to wrap it around okay Is that going to be too big of a hole that I drilled? Well, let's let's just see what would happen now if I was to I'll have to get the lighting just a little bit different here. Now, I suppose I could have cleaned off the inside just a little bit better there. This is my uh CA medium. You can see it a whole lot better than I can right now. Well, I'm going to assume that I've got it. Maybe tomorrow we should brush a little bit of primer on there and see what it looks like. Or maybe I should spray it because that's the way we're going to be doing it when we do the hood. Uh, yeah, speaking of the hood, maybe tomorrow Cellar Dweller will give us a call and say, hey, it's in. <laughs> if we're lucky, that is. In the meantime, thanks for watching. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow.